Today I'm going to replace the whole front brake system on my Kona Big Hanzo. For those of you not familiar with this bike, it's the sibling of the Kona Hanzo, a fairly well-known trail hardtail bike. The only major difference being the Hanzo runs 29 inch wheels and tires and the Big Hanzo runs 27.5 in a plus size tire, 2.8 or 3 inches wide. The main reason for changing this front brake system has nothing to do with braking power. I'm actually quite happy with the power of the brakes that are on here. It's currently running a used set of Avid Code calipers combined with SRAM Guide RS brake levers. The rear brake is totally adequate and fine. The front brake is also fine for stopping power, but it has an incredibly annoying squeal at super low speeds. You can hear for yourself. No matter what I've done, I have been unable to get rid of this dragging sound. I've rebuilt the lever, I've rebuilt the caliper, I've tried straightening the rotor, cleaning the rotor, tried different brake pads, everything that I can think of to try to alleviate this problem, trying to align the caliper properly, all those sorts of things. In the end, I can't get rid of the sound. It drives me nuts. One of my favorite local bike shops in the Vancouver area, Kinetic Cycles, had a great Black Friday sale where their Code R brakes were highly discounted and I couldn't pass up the deal. And I'm really hopeful that this swap will get rid of that noise. So this is what I bought for this job. A SRAM Code R complete brake set. This one is the, I believe, 1800 millimeter hose. So it's kind of a universal fit. You could use on the rear, you could use on the front. You just need to cut the hose to the proper length in order to make it work for you. SRAM code R lever, there's the code caliper, and then of course a very long cable. This is the hinge clamp that will clamp the lever onto the handlebar. They call this the SRAM Stealthamajig, which is, I believe this is comprised of a, I don't know if they're called a barb and olive in the SRAM world, but uh, these two little um, devices that will connect onto the end of the hose in order to connect it to the lever once it's been cut down. And there's a couple of bolts for mounting the caliper and a useful Torx tool that will fit the tiny Torx bolts that are for bleeding the system. Looks like there's a little user manual that comes with it. And then it just comes with a link to where to get the service manuals online and some safety instructions. So here's the majority of tools and materials that are going to be needed to do this job. I'm going to need a set of hex keys in order to primarily remove the brake caliper, maybe something else. Uh, this tool comes with the code brake. It's a T8 Torx bit. That's for putting the stealth jig in place. I'm going to need a T25 Torx bit, which I've got here on my bike multi-tool in order to take the brake lever off and install the new one. For bleeding the brake, I'm going to take out the brake pads and put this block that I made in. There's plastic ones you can get that are similar to this. I just made my own. In order to cut the brake line, you have to use either cutters or a sharp blade. I think either will work. Uh, the cutters will probably tend to squish the cable a little bit, meaning that I'll need um, some sort of plier in order to try to squeeze it back into as close to a round shape as possible. After cutting the line, the brakes are going to need a quick brake bleed. The SRAM kit is basically a couple of syringes. Uh, this is a cheap set off of Amazon. It seems to do the job just fine. I've used it for probably three bleed jobs so far. In order to get the bolts on the, both the lever and the caliper off in order to do the bleeding you need a t10 torx bit this one came with the bleed kit and it's always good to have a crescent wrench in case i need to do some small adjustments to the brake rotor in order to make it as round as possible as far as fluids go uh, dot four brake fluid this being a shram kit of course shimano uses mineral oil but uh, in this case for shram we must use dot four or I think 5.1, but I always use .4 um, brake fluid. And it's good to have some uh, SRAM butter, which is just some grease that's compatible with dot fluid, so I can put it on the Stealthamajig uh, to install the line into the lever, and it will not cause any 
issues with the dot four fluid. This ceram butter can be a little bit pricey. However, there's enough in here to last you a lifetime, really. You just use a tiny little bit for most purposes. So this is gonna last a really long time. It's good to have some tape in order to mark the hose where you wanna cut it. It's always good to have some paper towel or shop towels around to deal with any spills. This is the bleed kit that I use for the older Avid or SRAM brake systems. It has the same fitting at each end, both the caliper and the lever. In this particular case, instead of using one of these, I'm going to need to use a bleeding edge compatible tool. It's essentially identical except for this end fitting. The newer calipers, the newer calipers from, I think it's 2015, and on require a similar tool to this. This is not the SRAM official tool. It's one off of eBay that of course is cheaper. And uh, today will be the first time I use it to see whether it does the job or not. So let's take a quick look at the brake that's to be replaced. As mentioned, this is a guide RS lever that has been mated to an avid code caliper four piston i think these were about 2011 and prior somewhere in that era and this is the squealer <laughs> it doesn't seem to do it at high speed it only does it at low speed but that low speed squeal is enough to drive me crazy Before we start cutting the hose and do anything that can expose any of these parts to brake fluid, the first thing I want to do is remove the brake pads in order to ensure they don't get contaminated with brake fluid. So first we have to remove this little clip. Next this is a, I believe a two millimeter hex key. Brake pads and the clip come out the back. Comes with metallic pads. It's always good practice to put your fasteners back in where they came from so you don't lose them. Then I'm going to use my homemade caliper block to make sure we don't accidentally pull the brake lever and the pistons come out of the caliper. So now I've got my old brake caliper and my new brake caliper and the lines and I'm gonna line them up roughly the same length and I'm going to compare the two lines so this is where they intersect. So now I'm going to mark the line, I'm going to allow a little bit of extra. That's my cut line. So following the adage of measure twice, cut once, I held the cable up to the bike just to make sure that it actually appears to be the right length, and it does, so that passes the sanity test. So now I'm going to cut the line. Um, it seems to me like you could either remove the brake lever first and then cut the line or you could do it this way I don't really see a huge difference on one of the, when you do the second Action it's going to result in some fluid draining out probably very little will come out on this first cut because There's like a suction effect occurring in the line There's no air to be able to get in from anywhere else other than where I cut it so I expect a little bit a fluid to come out but not that much when I do the second step like removing the lever then air will be able to get in the line and I expect all the fluid in the line to to drain out on the part that I cut off so I'm going to start with a blade 
and see how this works. I've never cut through a line like this before, so I'll start with this. And if it doesn't work great, I'll go to my cutters after that. This cut should be as close to 90 degrees to the cable as possible. And there we go. It's not as 90 degrees as I'd hoped the cut would be. It seems like one huge advantage using the cutter though, as you can see, I got a nice round cut. These cutters would kind of crush the cable at the same time, and then you'd have to make an effort to kind of round out the cable after you're done. So, you know, I think that is adequate, but <clears throat> I think I'm also going to just try seeing if I can make that cut a little bit closer to 90 degrees if possible. A little bit harder than I thought to get this nice and straight and I'm not sure how imperative it really is but I'm gonna try one more time okay I'm reasonably happy with that cut now again not perfect I could I could keep doing this probably forever. Okay, I'm gonna stop there. So I think uh, before I take the hose off of the lever, I think I'm going to first install the Stealthamajig on the end of this hose so that this is now sort of a complete system ready to be screwed into the lever. So there's very, very basic instructions on this paper how to do it. You use the tool that was provided to screw this little piece into the hose, making sure you have the other parts already on the hose, and then you have to screw this little part onto the first part that you screwed in. And it has a specific orientation that it needs to go on. So this portion has normal threads, right-handed threads, that allow you to screw it right into the hose. When you get close to the bottom here, you want to make it so that it's as flush as possible without being squished. You don't want it to start squeezing the cable out. So I think, I think I'm about there right now. I think any further and I would start to compress the end of the cable, making it bulge out. So the next step is to install this guy. It has two different ends. This one is quite open. And this one is got threads. And so we want it to go on this way. And I'm realizing before I even start to do this that I'm getting ahead of myself because we need to have the other pieces from the lever over the cable first. Otherwise, you won't be able to put them on after you attach this portion of the hose to the lever. So let's put that aside for the moment. So it makes me realize I should have really done the lever first. So first thing is to pull off this boot that just slides off from the lever. I forgot to include the eight millimeter wrench in the list of parts needed, and I don't have it right here. So out of laziness, I'm gonna use my crescent wrench instead. So this is the point where I expect fluid to come out of the cable. 
because I'm now introducing air into the other end. And so we'll, it will allow fluid to flow out of here, especially if there's some gravity involved. So the lever itself will probably still hold most of the fluid inside because again we haven't opened any of the bleed screws or anything so it's got a bit of a suction effect won't allow air to come in this one looks much different than the stealthama jig not much different but slightly different i'm told that you should never reuse these i need to get these two pieces onto my new hose to make sure that they go on in the proper order once i install this to the lever Here's my new caliper and cut hose. And so before I put the, completely put the stealth jig on, I have to get this on first. This is the last piece, the rubber boot that connects it to the lever. And then I have to get this bolt on in this orientation to ensure that I can screw the cable into the lever. And now I can actually install my little olive as I know it. Now the threads, on this little thing it's connecting to are reverse threads. They're left to tighten. And when this goes on, I should see the little silver portion stick through just slightly. According to this document here, about zero to half a millimeter sticking out. And it's only to be hand tightened. This is what it should look like once it's ready for installation onto the lever. So just before attaching to the lever I just want to make sure these ends are as clean as they can be. I'm not aware of the torque rating yet on this, but I'm only going to cinch it down very lightly because I'm probably going to have to loosen it again once I have it on the bike just to get the proper orientation. The, well, is the, ho the hose turns in the nut. Maybe just because this isn't cinched down yet. So I figure that I might have to loosen this a little bit because the cable has a curve of its own. And so once I have it on the bike, I'll find out what the natural curve of the cable is and then how I want to orient the lever. I'm surprised that spins there right now, though. does bottom out. I wonder if I was, because the barb is hand tightened, I wonder if it had come loose in there while I was doing that. I'm not sure. Anyways, it's tight now. I'm going to leave this loose as a reminder that I still need to tighten that down when I'm finished. So now I need to prepare this for installation on the bike. So I need this little bracket. I'm reasonably happy with the angle of the hose. I think I'm just going to 
try to turn it a little bit and see if I can get it even better. The torque rating on this nut is eight newton meters. I can't get a wrench on there, so I'm going to go by feel. I think that should do the job. This hose could probably be a little bit shorter than this, but uh, I think I'm okay with that. So to start the bleed process, get your dot four fluid or 5.1. This is the syringe that's gonna go on the lever and you wanna fill it half to three quarters full. One of the important steps I seal that off is to get bubbles out of the fluid itself. In order to do that, you have to create a suction. You want to do this gently. If you do it violently, you'll introduce more bubbles into the fluid. So far, I've only seen a couple of small ones. I think that's good enough. Release the hose seal. So now I'm going to push the fluid through the hose to get all air bubbles out of the system. Once you have that, clip the hose. Now you've got solid fluid in there. Now I have to do a similar procedure for the bleeding edge syringe. Because the adapter won't fit through the opening of the dot fluid bottle, I have to pour some into a clean container. So the caliper syringe only requires about a quarter full of fluid. As before, draw the fluid into the syringe, seal off the clip, and then you want to use the suction to draw any bubbles that you can. Compression and suction. I'm seeing very few bubbles in this. Okay, that seems pretty good to me. So now to get the hose full of fluid and do the clip. Have a rag ready and push all the air out until you've got Nothing but solid fluid in the hose. Clip it off again. Now these are both ready to be installed on the bike so we can start the bleed. To connect the syringe to the code caliper, the bleeding edge port is on the back side, at the very bottom. It requires a four millimeter hex wrench to open it. You want to crack it open and then just snug it back tight again. Gently like that so nothing leaks out. Then take the bleeding edge connector. You rotate it and then push it in you get a little snap that's ready for bleeding leave that clipped for now to connect the lever syringe for bleeding you have to undo the little bleed screw using a t10 torx bit 
You want to have a rag ready because some fluid may come out of this. Then take your other syringe with the regular threaded end and thread it into this hole carefully. There we go. So everything is now ready for bleeding. We've got the syringe with all air taken out. We've got about three quarters of a syringe, half to three quarters up at the top here on the lever, ready to go, screwed in. And of course, down at the bottom, we've got the bleeding edge port snapped into the caliper, sealed off again with no air in the hose and this syringe with some room to allow for some expansion. But we're gonna start by pushing through fluid from the top down into the bottom syringe. Here's the top syringe. It's currently clipped, empty of air, ready to be pushed into the system. Here at the caliper end, we've got the mostly empty syringe, but no air in the hose clipped. And currently the bleeding edge port is locked. In order to start the process, we want to open the bleeding edge port about a full turn. And unclip the hose. We come back up to the top. We're going to unclip this hose. And now we're going to start pushing fluid through the system from the top. And as we do so, the syringe at the caliper is filling up with fluid. We're pushing fluid through the whole system. And of course we stop up here before we run out of fluid. If the fluid that comes out at this end were really dirty, kind of like a grayish dark color, um, then you really need to flush the whole system. You might find that if you're doing a bleed like this on an older brake system that you use for a while. In this case, I'm just going to now push that fluid back up through the system. And I expect that I'll see some bubbles appear at this end when I do so. I'm going to start pushing here. Okay, I'm getting down to the end here. And it looks like I may have only gotten a tiny bit of bubbles out of the system there. So now it's time to clip off the caliper end. Tighten down the bleeding edge port. So now with the bottom clipped off and sealed, focus on the top. I want to pull the lever three times. Then I want to suction the syringe. You can see air coming out. Push back into the system. Because it's sealed at the bottom, you'll hit a limit where you can't compress it anymore. You want to try to suck some more air out of there. None came this time. Push it back down. I'm going to try it one more time. Suction. No bubbles. Compress. Suction. And then one last compress just to get the system completely full. And then it's time to disconnect this port. Clip it. Catch any excess fluid. And then as quickly as possible, 
install the screw. Being very careful not to cross thread it. The torque on these bleed ports is about, I believe it's about one to two Newton meters, one and a half to two, somewhere in there. So I have a feel for how much that would be. Take some isopropyl alcohol to clean off the brake fluid. With the bleeding edge port closed, we can remove this system now. It just pops off. You just want to grab hold of that and just pop it off like that. One of the great things about this system is it really doesn't leak at all. So we're going to take a little alcohol and clean it off. Take my four millimeter hex key and tighten it again to about two newton meters. And one thing I don't think I showed in the beginning was removing this little rubber plug from the bleeding edge port. So that's what it looks like before you take that plug out. Now it's time to install the brake pads. Before you do, these gloves have really gotten contaminated with DOT4 fluid, and so I'm going to replace them with fresh gloves. I don't want to contaminate the pads or the rotor at all. So now with my clean gloves, I can handle the brake pads and the little clip that pulls them apart. It's time to remove my trusty block, wood block, uh, I mean, it's important to emphasize that I couldn't have done any of that bleeding with pulling the lever without having a block in there, or I risked pushing the pistons right out of the caliper. They need something to push against. So this should come out. The pads go in on the back side of the caliper. Line up the hole. Now I can install the pin. It goes right through. 2.5 millimeter hex key to tighten that up. I believe the torque on this one is the same as the bleed ports, so around 2 newton meters max. Never forget the little clip that retains this so that you can't accidentally lose your pads while riding. My caliper is ready to be put back on the bike. First of all, can't forget that I need this adapter. Uh, these forks, the RockShox Recon, they're uh, designed for 160 millimeter rotors, as they are. This adapter works with a 180 millimeter rotor, which is what I have installed here. And of course it indicates which end is up. So I believe the long one goes on the top, although I didn't check that for sure when I was taking the old caliper off. And then I want to put these little washers on. These are handy just so that when you're on the trail, if you have to take your caliper off for any reason, you don't lose, the bolt, bolt doesn't just fall out and you lose your bits all in the dirt. It just holds it together. Now it's always possible that I'll need washers as well to space it out or to help align it, but I'm hoping that I don't need to use any. So slide the rotor into the gap between the pads and finger tighten these bolts. Now I can see there's some blue Loctite on these threads so ideally I want to put some fresh, clean out those threads and put some fresh blue Loctite on these before I put them on for good but right now I'm just test fitting so this is a five millimeter Hex wrench. Just lightly cinch this down just so I can look at what we've got here. Looking at the rotor turning between the pads there, I definitely don't want to add any washers or I'm going to push the caliper out too far so the pads won't be contacting the rotor properly. It's pretty good as it is. Okay, I'm going to test the lever here. So, so far so good right off the bat for alignment and so forth. To actually tighten it down, it's usually best to loosen your bolts just slightly, just enough so that the caliper can float a little bit. Squeeze the brake lever. 
so that your caliper is locked onto the rotor. It usually helps it to self-align to a degree. Tighten those up a little bit. Release that and see what we get. Seems pretty good. There's an extremely small amount of dragging you can hear. I think the rotor is slightly warped now that I look at it and listen to that. You can tell by the sound that it's only rubbing in one area. I'm going to try to locate the place where it's rubbing. So it's rubbing from about there. about there and it's rubbing on the pad closest to the camera I'm gonna try to gently bend it this way Still rubbing a little bit right here. Is that in the area? Yeah, that's in the area that I identified before. It's right in the center of it. Okay, so there's no sound anymore. And visually, just to look at the rotor, looks pretty straight to me. Okay, I'm happy with that. Okay, now to torque the bolts properly. I've got my little handy torque wrench, which I've covered in previous videos. The torque rating for the caliper bolts is about 10 Newton meters. And of course, my little handy torque wrench only goes up till nine, so I'll have to Guesstimate beyond that. I'm noticing that the, due to the shape of the caliper, I can't get straight in on that bolt. And so I run the risk of stripping it. So I may have to do it by hand and just guesstimate. Seeing as I just got a feel for how much torque it was up top. I'm just going to have to do my best here. Keeping in mind, of course, that my hex key is only about half as long as my torque wrench. I will have to apply a lot more force to get the same torque as I do with the wrench. Next is the, the pinch bolt for holding the lever on the handlebar. T25 bit that's required. The thing here is, is that I really need to decide at what angle I'm going to have the lever before I do this. So I think I'm just going to eyeball it compared to the other lever. I like the angle of it. I tend to like my levers turned down a lot further. Some people have them closer to horizontal. I like to be able to have good feel on them when I'm standing up. The torque on the lever bolt is about three and a half Newton meters. So there we have it, the brake is installed, the cable has been cut to the appropriate length, and the only thing left to do is go ride, which is the best part. Hope you found this video helpful, or perhaps even just entertaining, and uh, if you enjoyed, give it a like and please subscribe. Thanks for watching.